Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with the first week, or first match of week two, sorry, for the Prophecy Cup. We have IRL Sluts versus TK. Uh, for the sake of propriety, I'm just going to refer to them as IRL. Because saying sluts so often, kind of awkward, not going to lie. A little bit. Uh, I'm the True Light. Casting alongside me is my wonderful senpai from college, T Crank. Hi. Um, well, before we jump into champion select here, what do you think we will see as far as picks and bans go? Well, uh, the past couple of days have been quite interesting with uh, a lot of pro players and a lot of high elo solo queue players talking about uh, potentially the meta in the bot lane drastically changing towards uh, bruisers and tanks even. Um, like Horn, Irelia, Yasuo, Mordekaiser, Renekton, Zin Shao. We might see all of these champions coming into the bot lane. And, yeah, uh, actually, it's I actually be had a solo queue game. Granted, gold five. Like, no. Warning. But it was a Jarvan Leona bot lane. And it actually did surprisingly well when they played around their power spike, when they played around, you know, hitting sticks, having that engage with Cataclysm and Leona Solar Flare. But looks like we're jumping into champion select now. We have IRL on blue side, TK on red side, correct? Or yep, that is correct. Awesome. <clears throat> I'm totally competent, by the way. <laughs> Any. <laughs> First ban coming through is Aurelia. That's an interesting first ban, especially on blue side, because you always just you normally just want to leave like, that open and get yeah, the first like pick. Aurelia tends to be more of a reactionary picker ban. Yeah, because she's so strong right now, she's probably like just way too overpowered. I think if you don't play her, you're at a disadvantage to everybody. So you might want to uh, learn that champion. I know actually Fat Red, I'm pretty sure he does play it, but I guess yeah. he decided to just ban it and pick something else first. And then moving forward, you see Kaisa Lucian bans on the side of TK. Um, I'd say those are pretty standard bans on this patch. Kaisa and Lucian can be absolutely insane right now. Kaisa, just with stacking attack speed and Lucian, when he gets that Essence Reaver, that Borg, that Black Cleaver, can just run through your entire team. It's pretty interesting that you see potentially... Absolutely. Well, I guess Talia can actually be a jungle ban at this point, correct? Yeah, Talia is definitely a flex ban. And uh, we've seen a lot of Talia jungle in solo queue. It's really strong, so definitely a good ban. Yeah, I think part of the reasons behind that is because her damage towards champions just got buffed so much, correct? Yeah, and the single see... target damage was drastically buffed, as well as the uh, AP item getting 20 extra ability power makes her clear really good. Yeah, I think that I've, I've had a few Talia jungles um, in ranked. Seems pretty good, although everyone playing it has flamed me. Although, that might be a reflection of me when I play. Anyhow, first pick coming in for IRL is the Trundle, most likely going into the jungle. Response picks are Morgana, but potentially Jin. Oh, the Jin's an interesting first phase pick. I guess they really don't want to prioritize the Ezreal. Yeah, uh, I agree. Ezreal would have a pretty safe lane into this, and you'll have a much stronger mid-game. I mean, I think... I think Ezreal, I think the the meme, or like at the very least the meme for 80s on this patch is like, you're looking at Lucian, and then Kai'Sa, and Ezreal, and then uh, I would say the next one is probably Misfortune. Well, here's a Ezreal pick that we are talking about. Yeah, a pretty easy Ezreal pick, uh, in my opinion. You don't have to, like, show any of your crazy balling picks that you've practiced so far, if you have. And uh, I mean, you're going to be really happy with getting to pick Ezreal in the second rotation. Yeah, if I'm going to be honest, if I were TK, I would have preferred to pick Ezreal away from Rabbit, or from IRL, because Ezreal does still have synergy with Trundle building that Zeke's Convergence. You take the Ezreal pick away, and then all of a sudden your, your Mystic shot, your Q, uh, it's not on the side of IRL. Now, I don't think that a Jin pick is bad, I just think that they, the option of taking Ezreal over, Jin, over the Jin is better. 
Yeah, it was a bit of an oversight, in my opinion. Do you think this is a Camille jungle? Yeah, it's definitely possible. Uh, the Camille top is good, but you can also flex it into the jungle. It's a pretty strong mid game, pretty good duelist. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know the how good it is in the trundle. I'm sure it's fine. You can actually use his pillar against him for your hook shot. Who dares defy my will? Well. Fiora Ban, I think, is a straight up target of the fat rat. If, as I recall, as I recall, he actually is a Fiora one trick ish. Yeah, he's the most number of games played on Fiora. Yeah, it's his most played champion by a lot. Rek'Sai is Soto's most played champion by a lot too. So I'm interested why they've banned that Rek'Sai, even though they have a Trundle. Maybe they think Trundle might be might be played top. We'll have to see. And the well, you could even see a Trundle. Uh, actually, well, you have a Nami, but yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna say you can see Trundle as support, but I don't think anyone actually subscribed to that Dyrus Nami top video. So, oh god. Anyhow, <laughs> final ban from IRL is Malphite. Oh, is a Chow um, pick. So we're gonna see a Camille top, very yeah. likely. In before it's actually Camille mid with Morgana or Camille support with Morgana mid. <laughs> And the Jarvan ban is interesting because uh, Takei is pretty known for their wombo combo comps, and they like to play the Malphite and the Jarvan. And wow, Corky pick. That's pretty ambitious into the uh, Camille and Sin Xiao, I think. I mean, yeah, I, I really agree. I think Shen would be a good idea to compensate for that, but even then, Corky as a blind pick, I'm not entirely like, jazzed about, but they have no choice. I suppose. I mean, it's all on hide on Blake to see. Holy bear! Mala bear. As Whoa. Bear. That's, That's either top lane or jungler. That would be wild either way. It could be either one. We'll have to we'll have to see here. Those aren't like volley bear is not a uh, placeholder, right? No, it's not. Uh, it's... Oh, it's it's the jungle volley. Yeah, we might see a jungle fully bear. Could be. I mean, we we love see to a see. Jungle Camille matchup. Okay, okay, never mind. It's 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 top lane. Okay, I I'm substantially deflated at this point. I was really <laughs> really hyped. So the Trundle is good into the Zin Xiao, and the Volley Bear. I'm pretty sure the Volley Bear is good into the Camille, because you can actually stop his hook shot very reliably with your roar, because your yeah, roar now because, will always fear. Yeah, because it. Well, I'm not sure if it's. Be, or it, it's it like uh, I think it's like a slight knockback or something. Yeah, they did something to it, so it's some sort of crowd control. They, they gave it some form of hard CC, which would be able to reliably stop the hook shot and gauge. I mean, I think the other thing is that Camille, who likes fighting so much, unless Camille can consistently abuse her uh, leg sweep, her sweeping strike, or whatever it is, um, Volley Bear actually is happy to take fights against her considering that his passive restores 40% maximum HP. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure his bite does max HP damage. So it does missing. It does missing, missing HP. Missing HP, damage. wow. Oh, that's right. Next key. So when she gets low, the uh, Volibear can, Volibear can definitely outduel the Camille. It's a pretty interesting yeah, especially pick. especially as he stacks up that attack speed considering the Thunderclaw's ultimate. I do like the comp that Takei has, though. I think it's pretty well-rounded. They, uh... Yeah. They have it's Lissandra and Jin, which is like kind of low damage, but they have a Camille and Zin Xiao as well. They have a good amount of yeah. dive. The Jin can fire from the back line. Zin Xiao and Lissandra and Camille, they all just go in, try to kill these AD carries. If you think about it, they actually have a fair, pick, a fair bit of pick potential as well. Lissandra yeah, lots of pick. Glacial Path, Camille, Cookshot, Jin with his root. <laughs> I think it's uh, Flourish? Deadly Flourish? Deadly Flourish, yep. Yeah, okay, I know. I know building names. Anyhow. <laughs> so let's just talk about lane by lane matchup. We just talked about the top lane and the jungle a little bit. So let's look at the mid lane. Corky with Cleanse versus Lissandra with TP. I don't necessarily think that it's a terrible matchup for Corky. Right? As no, it shouldn't. Can, it as should... long as he can position properly away from the minions to avoid Ice Shard. Yeah, it should be a pretty good matchup, and if you have the cleanse, you're really never going to get ulti ultied by the Lissandra unless uh, you have to use it earlier. But what I would say with a team with this much pick, uh, pick potential, with this much like solo-ish engage potential, 
I would be afraid as IRL's bot lane when you consider you have a double TP on the side of Take it. You have a Zin Zao who's good at negation. You have two strong roots. And at that long range roots from the Jin Deadly Flourish, from the Morgana Dark Binding. That is a potentially party, like, that's potentially a seven man party in the bot lane with five people from one side. Yeah, I do like the, uh, the amount of pressure that this comp can put out if they are able to push their lanes in with Lissandra and uh, Camille being able to go teleport and dive in the bot lane. Since Xiao should and, be able to push, should uh, yeah. have some sort of tempo advantage over the Trundle. Yeah. But it's not as big of like a Graves over Trundle would have. What I would say is that the lanes uh, for IRL are pretty gankable. I think that you can you can definitely like Lissandra is the only one that you would have problems unless like if unless her claw has already been wasted her glacial path. Whereas Jin, he is pretty reliant on the Morgana to black shield him to get out. And if Morgana missed times the black shield, then Trundle, Nami, they have that ability to engage on the Jin in the bot lane. And you also can interrupt Hookshot with Trundle's pillar. Uh, to go on the other side, we were talking about how Hookshot can abuse Trundle's pillar, but if Trundle uses his ice pillar properly, then Camille can get caught out as well. That's slow on Ice Pillar, although it's a 30% slow, it's 30% in an AoE constant, and you have Volley Bear's charge, his Q, just run towards champions, gain that bonus movement speed towards enemy heroes. Um, Laning-wise, I think that <coughs> IRL actually have pretty decent ways to engage and ways to harass, but as the game transitions away from the laning phase, you are seeing more of an issue in terms of straight engage power, Nami wave, Nami bubble, not the best ways to engage. Yeah. You'd probably be hoping for a volley bear with a righteous glory to just run at them. But even then, that can still get stopped up by Lissandra using Ring of Frost, by Morgana using Dark Binding, by Jin using Deadly Flourish. Now, Is it Ring of too? Frost. Yeah, like Ring of Frost is a short CC. Um, I think it's maybe 1 to 1.5 seconds as you level it up. Deadly Flourish, pretty much the same deal. Dark Binding, though, well, there's that meme. By the time you come out of Dark Binding, the game ends. It's a long CC. <laughs> and if, if the Volley Bear and Cage gets stuffed by it, then it's kind of hard for IRL to get in there, barring a really strong Nami wave. Or Corky utilizing that package, that big one, to get in there. I know the big one is his ultimate, but the big <laughs> package uh, to uh, to get in there and disrupt. But I would not want, as a Corky, I would not want to use the package to get into the back line of this comp because there is so much damage on the side of TK that I would be scared packaging forward. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to see how uh, the IRL can engage, just because there's so much. There's a good amount of disengage from Take side, and uh, once they get to the late game, they'll have a ton of damage with the Corky and Ezreal. But how will they be able to actually force things? That'll be a uh, something to think about at the end of this game. And uh, we are live. We're out of the fountains. Yeah, as you can see, only two members of Take have skins. Everyone else is base skin status. <laughs> I like the High Noon Jin. It's a classic. I mean, I think I think Lissandra could have some really great skins. It's just she's just not a popular champion, and she's not a very good one either, in my opinion. No, but, I uh, agree. I, he does I trust that. the pick, I guess. And this is actually the second Lissandra pick we've seen. Uh, Hashlinging Slashers. They brought it out in week one, so I wonder why they uh, wonder why these teams are opting into Lissandra. Well, Lissandra can have a decent laning phase when you manage her mana bar, when you play around with her passive. Now, I'd, I'd be interested to know some of the masteries here. Because that because what I've noticed, actually, is that on certain heroes, or on certain champions, the new mastery Nimbus Cloak is actually absolutely insane. Yeah, um, and uh, what comes to mind is the uh, Morgana. I think that's yeah. really, really good. You use that on Morgana, you use that on Trundle after you have your convergence. Heck, you can even use it on Volibear. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily 
<laughs> you use it. You use your ultimate as a uh, gap closing tool. <laughs> yeah. I like it. You, you but get, actually, you view yourself in the thunder. Take a look here at the bot lanes. Looking for a bush cheese. Oh, it's actually already warded. Already oh, wow. Warded, so it gets caught out here, but finds the dark binding onto Ezreal. Poke for poke. Surprised that TK's bot lane didn't know that it was warded. So that kind of uh, yeah, because hurts them a little bit. When you walk in there, that you see those warded. Level oh, two level gank, two gank top. here on top lane. Zin Zhao gonna get the knock up. Oh, goes in for the dash, gets the Q off. Oh, the passive. Oliver passive keeps him alive. There's no grievous wounds either, so he gets a fair bit of health back. Yeah, that I'm was. Really happy about that one. I think the flash was necessary to keep him alive. Because yeah. if you don't flash there, then you're liable to face. Camille or Zin Zhao flashing in. I like the discipline from Snuff and Muffin to not use his. The shot, um, oh, there it there's is. The, there's the disruption we're talking about. Kathy? Yep, Kathy won. Finding the dark finding. Looking for harass, but it's actually his carry that takes a pretty bad end of it. And it is uh, important to note that this Morgana, Kathy won, is a substitute for this team. Yeah, so I we'll have to see how they do. I think I've seen TK before, and I don't remember Kathy being. Right. But hey, you know what? Just because you're a sub doesn't mean you're bad. Oh, is the chest coming in again? Glacial fast forward, <laughs> glacial fast forward into Ring of Frost. You see the flashes come out from both Corky and Zin Zhao. Zin Zhao getting that first plus. Now, Soul looking for the response gang. <laughs> Finds the, the ice pillar, but unfortunately Zin Zhao just says no way. Charges over the pillar to a minion. Gets right out of there. Nicely done from him, and Snuff of Muffins is really getting some pressure on in the early game right here. Oh, and a big trade for Bot. Kathy finds a really good dark binding into the Jin Deadly Flourish. Ezreal's at roughly 20% health. I think it's a bit aggressive from Daddy Nahor to keep autoing like that. Oh, and here's Lissandra, another gank in the top lane for her. That's the flash from the Camille. Lissandra oh. properly tanking the tower, so it's easy. Kill onto the volley bear bear. Really well played by Blank Hirosa on the Lissandra. Super good ganks up in the mid lane, and then he follows it up by roaming top and getting a kill on the yeah, volley bear. Yeah. Because immediately when you see that trundle try to gank, or was it the trundle kind of thing in Bob? No, I don't think it got spotted out. My bad. <laughs> he might have been spotted out. I'm not actually sure. Okay. But getting this Camille ahead of the volley bear is going to be really important for the uh, free take roster. Yeah, I think I absolutely agree. Getting a Camilla header behind is like game breaking. It's just about every game. Yeah. Um. Jen looking for a four shot. This is quite fine. Though. When you see MIA things go down in the top lane, uh, not quite sure why. Maybe it's just some teammates. Oh, Kathy one's got to be careful. Kathy taking a lot of damage here, but I think he's fine. Black Shield into the Dark Binding onto Ezreal. I think he's dead. Ignite. No, oh, not. one last check at the Druid. Oh my goodness. I think, I think uh, Flash was necessary there. Take-A's bot lane. Take-A's bot lane could have played that a lot better. They uh, didn't really stack that CC like they could have, but Blanca Rosa, man, he's going super aggressive, super I mean, I roam think, heavy. I think Kathy got really spooked. Is the issue. I think opposing, he saved his root for way too long, and uh, he definitely could have used it once he got binded to stack that CC. Yeah, but you gotta look cool, man. You said <laughs> looking look cool is in shallow. You gotta get the fadeaway shot off. The mid lane, Blankerosa and Sniff of Muffins. Uh, wait, oh. my screen froze, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Blankerosa, Blanca whoa! Oh, he Blanca tried. Forward misses the ice shard. Now it's nothing Muffins that seems a little out of position, but he gets out with a dash again. Wow. Showing good use. Of that dash to get out. Blanca Roja, he uh, greeted he for that kill pretty hard. Yeah, he didn't have to he go for that play it. at all. If he didn't do that, he was alive, but he went for that play, it didn't work out, and now he uh, got killed for it, giving Trundle a kill. But here comes the Lissandra immediately teleporting mid lane. And they're converging on Soto here. Opposent's gonna get taken down, and so will Soto One. Lissandra just pushes mid lane with the teleport; doesn't actually get any damage out. 
That was a uh, two for one in the end, if you're counting the bot and the mid fights. I think I lost yeah. my co caster. Oh, there he is. No, no, like, I, for some reason my client keeps lagging. I'm trying to fix it. That happens to me too. Let me uh, let me double check my time. I'm at 6:50 right now. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm like a two seconds behind now. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, my client keeps lagging. I like the uh, Jin build here. He's going full. He's <laughs> going for a penetration build. I mean, I think with the items you can either run Storm Razor or you can just go for the classical. Um, you can either go for the Storm Razor or you can just go for the classical lethality. I don't think lethality here is bad at all. Um, at least against the Ezreal, against the Quirky, against the Nami, lethality definitely going to work out. Also, Storm Razor giving that free crit, free crit. Eh, it's a reduced damage crit. If I recall properly, it's 160 yeah. to 200, and that's based on your attack speed. It's based on your uh, current critical strike chance. So if it, oh, if you're at like 50% cool crit, on your attack speed. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's a good item on Jin just because Jin doesn't attack as often as other marksmen. So it's uh, you'll get it procked pretty often. Yeah. Blue buff handoff going on to the quirky there. Zinzal, on the other hand, says, this is my I need this. Lissandra, <laughs> you have a mana pass, or you have a free spell cast every 20 seconds. Such a Which, wonderful passive, right? I, I have made Reddit posts about the about Lissandra <laughs> passive. Like, I, I think it's absolutely, it's, it's definitely one of the worst passives in the game. And it's uh, like, like Zerath's passive, but worse, right? Yeah, pretty much. Because at least Zerath gets mana back when he autos. Right. Uh, Lissandra, you have to see the champions to get the slight reset. It's not good enough. Bully, Bully Bear. Bear. On Camille in the top lane here, popping the ultimate for the wave clear. Yeah, he's he angry. He's just gonna call the storm. Call the maelstrom or whatever his ultimate's called. What is that? Thunderclaw. Oh, it's just oh, thunderclaw. That's cool. Actually just called That's cooler than I thought. I yeah, I thought it was like something cool like maelstrom, but thunderclaw is pretty sweet too. He's yeah, actually gonna roam mid. Nice. Let's take a look out for uh, the Volley Bear. He's gonna get but that's the all, flank on. Uh oh, uses Glacial Path forward. This is almost certainly gonna be a kill. Oh. Ring of Frost stops up the engage. Uh, <laughs> because Snuff and Muffins has Black Yoris back. He just says nope, and then Volley Bear can't move. I mean, Ring of Frost is a semi decent form of CC. It's, it's a root. It's not amazingly great. And that's, uh,. That's a typical Volley Bear gank right there that we just witnessed. The uh... the other thing about Lissandra is like you can look at her build right now. There is there is no coherence on this build. Double Amptone blasting one Doran's ring. Yeah, I wonder uh, what those items are gonna build out of. Notorious GAD getting poked out quite a bit, but the uh, Nami sustain is really nice. Yeah. Trundle's just Soto waiting for a lane gank, but there's a ward in the bush right here, so I think Kathy is Kathy and. Posen are gonna be fine. Yeah, it's just standing on the ward. It'll be a bit awkward when you see that ward expire. But it looks like he's walking forward anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess... You know what? He does what he pleases, alright? He wants that pillar. He's that's, just asserting that's, himself. But, but that's Mundo. Mundo does as he pleases. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> I guess you could say he was trolling the thing. Yeah, exactly. He got a pink ward out of that. See, that's a whole minute of time for one pink ward. It's worth it. Is it? <laughs> totally. Nah, it's not worth it. <laughs> we see Trundle, he's looking for that mid lane pressure now. Prop to the uh, bot lane of Teike for being a, about 10 yeah, CS up in a lane that, you know, their their AD carry is definitely better than opposing, so being, ta being down 10 CS on a good champion like Ezreal. Oh, here comes uh, the gank from the Zichao. He's coming in with a gank. Hide on Blake moving forward with a package. See TP's coming out from both top laners. Nothing Muffin has to run away here. <laughs> well, considering the fact that... Ah. Well, I think this is overall a defeat for 10k. They're the oh, curtain call. Away. Jin ultimate in response, though. I don't really... Block it for the Nami! Oh. <laughs> hey, hide on Bush, Team! 
You have enough health to save your teammate. And here comes the Camille, gonna pop the ultimatum. Bully Bear's gonna get chunked down low. Zin Chow flashes forward, and so does Lissandra with the Ice Prison. That's gonna be an ace just about. Fine. Oh! Blake and Rose! Oh my goodness, barely, yeah. barely survived. Trundle survives because of the ultimate there, I think, right? Yeah, and uh, that's an ace for free take oh. a. Well, near ace. Trundle's still alive. Oh, just, yeah. Well, cause I'll consider that an ace just because they let Nami die for no reason, but. And that eventually led to, uh. It led to that demise right there. But TK taking the initiative right there. Yeah, it's good. I'm really sorry for the point lagging, by the way. But anyhow, it's good that they get the first tower. Now it's an Infernal Drake. Infernal Drake, absolutely wonderful for Jin. Yeah, one of the best champions in the game with the Infernal Dragon. The uh, Lissandra does pretty well with it too, just because her damage is not that high. So getting some extra yeah. damage is always nice. Camille will love that. So they're gonna eventually they're gonna scale better too. Are you uh, installing or downloading anything in the background? You know I think I know what's going on. It's because I'm also hosting a rabbit room for a different Discord server. Nope, oh, that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Classic anime sesh. On the uh, rabbit. Movie sesh, actually, but the, it's hard. I, I think, yeah, it's just running my internet really ragged. Yeah. But as you can see here, over a 2k, almost a 3k gold lead now on the side of TayK. Yeah, just about 3,000. I like this Lissandra pick. I think it's doing a lot of pressure for this team. The uh, bot lane is uh, actually so going to swap now. A, turned into a losing echo. Lissandra. Like with the haste passive now, yeah, twenty percent CDR. Yeah, twenty percent CDR. Yeah. And looking at the uh, map here, the bot lanes have both swapped up top. The uh, IRL bot lane is just going to try to counteract that swap and save is that tower. Lane, is it the bot lane swapping up top for IRL, or is it the bot lane? Up top? It's both. And actually, Blake has to force his flash, but he's going to get ultimate again. Pretty aggressive tower dive. Oh no, Blake? he's dead. No, no, he's dead. Yeah. Okay, so Blake Hiroha uh, with the misplay. A bit, a bit over aggressive, honestly, with that tower dive, especially after you missed the ring of frost there. I think good. It was ambitious. Better on top, but good decision from better on top to just keep going for it though, because uh, Blankaroa was just constantly tanking tower. I think he could have just backed out a bit earlier because better on top had so much health there. Yeah, and this Corky is uh, already pretty far behind. Doesn't have the Triforce just yet. But Camille getting a third kill is pretty nice. And here comes Snuff and Muffins. They're going to go for this gank here. Good Nami with Tidal Wave, but... I think oh, Kevin! Ignite, dodges the uh, barrage. Drops the final pick of Ignite. Sad life. The Sin Xiao pick is doing so much work right now. Even the into the Trundle, which people Just consider to be a good aggressive. matchup. Like it, Snuff and Muffins is playing so aggressively. Yeah, and really, really aggressive. To, Soto cannot it's defend this turret. To, like, get any tempo. Oh, I guess the Morgana died, so he, they, he could probably defend it. I mean, if he gets too close, like, he can root him and then Zinchao can kill him. Pretty sure. That's true, but I don't I think guess they're not going to go for that, but I thought it was after a... the tower dive in mid, they're a little less <laughs> jazzed about going for a tower dive in top. Yeah. Especially against a Trundle that has ultimate up. Yeah, that's true. You can at least burn it. Like, he's gonna, he's so, he's not that squishy right now, so. They're just trying to whittle down the tower for free. Can get the auto. There's the root. See, he's, he's yeah, like, yeah, that was a free okay. kill. <laughs> I don't know what I they think, thought they were doing there. I think Nami might have actually been in range for heal. I don't know what happened. There. Oh, interesting. And I don't. Think, oh, looking at Zhao. I don't think Soto casts sun, subjugate either. He's out dropping incredibly low here in top lane. Oh, he Ezreal, canceled oh, the auto tag. Oh no. Damn, unlucky. Why am I like unskilled at that point if I'm gonna be? Entirely savage. <laughs> Canceling an auto attack. Unfortunate. Okay, thanks. Looking for the poke with a mystic shot that's powered by Nami. Things hit pretty hard. Yeah, and they should not be looking for a 2v2 here from TK. They're a bit chunked Ooh, out right now. They're looking to recall. Practically for free. Yeah. They need to recall, but 
Unfortunately, you're yeah. better on top all the way in bot lane. Yeah, and here comes Corky with the there. package, but There's here comes Lissandra too. From Blank Yora. Zinzao forces. Double TP! Uh, semi double TP? Daddy the four taking incredibly low, but it looks like he's gonna survive. Blank Yora forced to flash out. Zinzao flashing forward. Oh, the ultimate off, but he can't kill. Rat. Now Fat Rat. Now Batman uses those thunderclaws. Zinjao! Oh. Zinjao gets the kill! Oh, <laughs> man. The Notorious GAD able to get the response kill. Since, uh, Jin almost Look getting the ace with the root, but there's the auto attack in the queue and he's down. Oh, man. Ace for ace for Tay K. <laughs> you know, I think the. Is, is Jin's Q called Dancing Grenade or Bouncing Grenade? Uh, Bouncing Grenade. Pretty oh, I sure. Dancing grenade. I thought, uh, no, you're right. Was, it's dancing grenade. Okay, I was gonna, I was, that way I can just say he says, "Ezreal, I want to watch you dance." Dance, monkey, dance. Yeah. <laughs> watches Ezreal just force the arcane shift away as he watches the little canister bong him in the. Yeah. <laughs> you see the canister going up in the trajectory, and you see it coming towards you like no. That's that's the weak canister, by the way. <laughs> the single bounce. <laughs> it's like getting killed by a, a can of soda. <laughs> nice. Look, I'm just saying, it's a sad way to go. It is a sad way. Dying to a grenade after you flash away. It's almost the same thing as, like, flashing away when the auto attack is still following you. Oh. That's, like, the worst feeling. But the feeling that TK have is pretty good right now. They're up 7,000 gold. Garen uh, or... Uh, <laughs> Garen ulti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he just, just tracks you and you die. And you that happens, so like, terrible. at least once a game to me when I'm versus Darius. Because you think you flash out, and then he's just like, no. You just can't escape the dunk. Remember when his apprehend would track you through flash? Oh, take a opposing. Flash engage from Fat Rat onto Oh there. man. Oh, instantaneously a kill. But on the other side of that, Snuffin Muffins finds Notorious GAD with solo kill. Yeah, he got destroyed right there, 1v1. <laughs> Snuff, you trade AD for AD, Snuffin Muffins just says I can do better than you guys. I He's AD carries. Anymore. He's AD carries I'm getting picked off. Out. They should have played Mordekaiser. <laughs> Wouldn't have died if they played Mordekaiser. I'm not sure if that's true. <laughs> so you guys, this is the meta. This is why we have this uh, Yasuo bot meta. Base stats are so high. Out. You see Zen Zhao actually going for a Triforce also with a Warrior enchant. He's going to yeah. do a lot of damage, but as the game goes on, he's incredibly squishy in this case. And Zin Chao's looking for Moby more fix. Too. This, that's what his Moby was speaking. He gets the engage off. Oh, Nami, I think, died for the red buff ticks. So much damage. Oh, the big one! Oh, speaking of damage. The big one, but instead, it's down better on top, engaging with the Hextech ultimatum. Jin throwing, throwing out the deadly flourish to root up the Oh, Lissandra. Notorious JD gets the ultimate off it. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Or, or no, I'm sorry. Blank Yora got the ultimate off, and Sorius GAD was able to arcane shift away to safety, which leads to the death of TK's top laner. But overall, they get the push out. Which yeah. Is a victory. Yep, two for two, and they get the push for that second mid lane tower. So, so I mean, up think, nine thousand gold at twenty minutes. I think the major problem here for IRL at the moment is that Notorious. Okay, he just finished stacking his tier. He did not have a finish to stack until yeah. five seconds. Yeah, and he just bought his gauntlet too. So, you know, maybe that makes the difference with these team fights moving forward. Gauntlet giving out that consistent CC. It's tier possible. The single target damage. Yeah, but if this, uh, if this Lissandra can just pick you off, you don't have any extra health, you don't have any magic resist on this Ezreal, so if the Lissandra can somehow get an ultimate on you, you're just gonna die. And as you can see with the Fairy Charm and the Sapphire Crystal, Ezreal is looking for that double tier build. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mana on mana on mana. Oh, and the Jin actually going for uh, some crit after the Ghost Blades. So he's going to have that Rapid Fire Cannon for the extra range on that auto, as yeah. well as the Executioner's Calling for the uh, Healing Reduction. You actually see, you Good idea. see two Executioner's Callings out for the Volley Bear and the Trundle. Yeah, and that's push. smart, because the Camille's going to want to split push. And the uh, Jin just wants to hit everybody with his physical damage. Whoa, here comes another fight top. I think Snuff and Muffin's going a bit over aggressive here. I don't think he can find a way to engage back on that. Ends up falling to Soto? Oh, okay, I understand why. Yeah, with the subjugate. Um, 
And the it's red either buff. a subjugate or a disease convergence proc working there. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, because he was under effects from both, which causes a burnout, a burning effect. It's yep. weird. Disease convergence is a very weird item. It's uh got a lot to it. On the other side of this all, I think that I mean you you still see this rather dominant gold lead on the side of uh KK. Uh, let me check the gold overall. Yeah, consistently across the board, it's almost a 1k gold lead, except in the bottom lanes. That's where you see the bulk of the gold lead of uh, TK over IRL. But right now, Zin's getting pressured. Do you just see him taking the Mystic shot? Oh, double TP happening again in the top lane. Notorious JD throws out the. <laughs> You're dead. Eyes, but he just gets first. <laughs> like, you know, that's exactly what you were talking about there. Zin throws down the curtain call. Tries to find the Nami, ends up shooting, hitting the Volibear with the final shot. Nami goes down to flank Iora. Volibear is going to fall as well. Now Corky's caught out, running away. Mill's going to survive here. Right on Blake, almost certainly going down. Tries to get the return kill onto Cappy one, but it doesn't go through. Just not enough damage. Clean ace to take K, and they're going to go for this Baron right here. Don't and waste your time killing the Pink Ward. You just got to kill the Baron right here. Don't have a ton of time left. Although, you see that Cappy took a while to crash the uh, tower, or wave into the tower. Yeah, and that doesn't add too much at this much point. Yeah, wait, Cappy gets here really, really late. It doesn't make a difference, but maybe that's the slack of some synergy, man. <laughs> so yeah, Baron for free take K 23 minutes after a very nice team fight. A good chase down. That's exactly really what you want to do with this comp. Double TP. Like, that is exactly what your comp wants to do. And, uh,. Yeah, I applaud Take A for that. A super good play. Yeah, and while we were talking about the disengage potential of Take A, you actually see that there's very little disengage potential on the side of IRL. Volibear, Trundle, not that great, but getting out. And the people that can, as for the people that can get out, that's primarily Corky and Ezreal, Arcane Shift, and just boosting away for the Corky with W. Yeah, it's not that great, honestly. Yeah, and Corky going for. Okay, he's going for, not for Infinity Edge. Almost freaked out for a second because that doesn't build into IE anymore. He's going to go no, for the Storm think, Razor. Yeah, I was going to say that's probably Storm Razor. Get that guaranteed magic damage crit. Yeah, guaranteed Although, crit. Do you, think, do you think he still goes for Infinity Edge here? Uh, eventually you do, yeah, just because it's such a good boost in damage. You probably. I actually don't know what Corky wants anymore. The uh, build make it's a little awkward now because you have an extra item to fit in. Yeah. But here comes the tidal wave, looking for an engage, but. Yeah, harass, you know, but maybe maybe Corky just wants to build the Infinity Edge, get the crit item, so he can get his old passive back. It's possible. Do you remember Corky's old passive? <laughs> his old passive it used to be like 50% MR and or AD and AP, no. right? No, it was like 10% of his auto attack and converted to damage. Oh yep, uh, yep, the OG <laughs> Corky terrible. passive. It was terrible. I mean, it's not awful. But it's like just okay, not that great. It, okay. it wasn't terrible in like old league days. But like, yeah, I used to love it, as Corky. It went on, as it went on, Corky aged poorly in regards to the best. Yeah, Corky used to be one of my favorite champions like way back when. I mean, this is UFO Corky. That's high quality. He is UFO? It's legendary. Yeah. Oh, wow, nice. It's pretty quality skin right there. Is, is that a chroma? I can't remember. If you uh, have I chroma. think it is a chroma, yeah. But I don't. There's so many chromas now, I forget. Yeah. Anyhow, you look. You see TK here rotating out to the bot side. I'm better on top. Actually, it doesn't have TP available right now, but looking to split push top anyway. I think that'll be fine, just name. because I don't think anyone can 1v1 him, so... Not reliably. Yeah, you're right. Volibear has a banner of command, but that won't help him really in dueling. So they're going to send all five members down here to clear the wave, but Corky is so far no. forward. I don't know what Python Blake's doing there. Maybe he thought he's safe with W, but... Lissandra doesn't care. Yeah, he they dies he, with, he he dies with cleanse up, but even if he had pressed cleanse, he was dead. He was just dead no matter what. They had yeah, no I idea. I don't think there's anything he could do. He had no idea that they were there, so that's why he walked this, up trying to clear the wave. Game, this game is so heavily in the favor of taking. Yeah, you gotta question the blind picking Corgi. You gotta question the blind pick Corgi, uh, because well, you couldn't I mean, really go did, for other that's things. What we did question in champ select. We, yeah. I said I don't know. I'm not really sure about why I'm picking Corky as a bit Oh, good bind on this Odo. Gonna get that harass down. 
stacking the CC onto the Trundle. Ooh, Notorious VAD taking dangerously low. On yeah, the IRL. Season. Just see Zin Zhao pushing mid, taking the tower. Yeah, the pop to this banner command. They're Hop just. They're just getting dismantled now at this point. Uh, with the good split pushing that they have with the Xinxiao and the Camille, they're gonna split all yeah, three lanes, and they're gonna... They actually... Yeah, they don't take any inhibitor. But, yeah, no more turrets. As, as unfortunate as it is, I don't think that Corky's wave clear is anywhere close where it needs to be to defend against them. And lacking that wave clear mechanic, it's so difficult for IRL to keep it stalling out here. I'm actually very surprised that TK could not pick up an inhibitor there. Uh, they had a lot of pressure on the map. I think, I think they could have taken potentially mid and bot. Because I don't think they and actually maybe, lose any fights. Because they definitely they could have asserted themselves for that. They could have asserted themselves harder for uh, an inhibitor. Oh, okay, while I do agree with you, I, I still think that they just wanted to play it safe considering that you still have Trundle Subjugate available. You still have, they were probably scared of Ezreal's uh, Arcane Barrage. Um, Nami Tidal Wave plus Volibear, Thunderclaws. All of those things can work really well together in the right conditions. So don't fault them for playing it safe, but do fault them for not taking at least one inhibitor. I think it's a little too safe in my opinion, but uh, yeah. they, they, you know they're what? certainly not they're certainly not in a bad spot yeah. without an inhibitor. Okay. Like they're at a 16k. Goal. Like they're up, they yeah, they're up 16,000. So like you can't really, they'll, they'll win a fight and then they might end the game straight off of that. You know what? You know what they wanted? They just wanted the mountain drink, okay? You know, they're playing the long game. con. They're they're denying them all of the XP they would get by having that lane push in. Look, I mean, how many how many elders have we seen? And here they go. Prophecy here they go for the inhibitor. I actually don't know how many I think, elders we've got. I think the got. stats that Ripsky put out said that we only saw two elders taken. Oh, okay, that makes some sense, I think. TK, TK is trying to throw us a bone <laughs> No Morgana. You want to see some elder gameplay? The Morgana finishing off the inhib. It's pretty sweet. Getting that final auto off. The Jin backing away like, yo, you're my support, you got it. You finish that off. <laughs> I mean, you see IRL moving as a unit here, but I don't really think... Uh-oh, there's a fight. Oh, the Revival Garosa! <laughs> Damage Blanca Rosa puts out just glacial tapping forward. <laughs> it's our ultimate into the queue. There's just so much damage. Just curtain call, bursting people down. <laughs> now you see Snubbin Muffin just flash all. That's the Revolver or onto the Trundle. Yeah, you see the GG's come out. Finn that surrender. That was a pretty sick Lissandra play right there. Getting taken out, but killing yeah, both but AD carries in one it. combo. That's just, yeah, that's gonna end the game right there. Sub 30 minutes? Yeah, sub 30 minutes. 29-10. Very fast game coming out of TK. And uh, the interesting draft from IRL does not pay off. And they go down 0-1 in the series. I mean, I think their clear objective on what to do was, you know, have that Volley Bear be able to solo engage, but it just never took off. Um, Zin Zhao, Snuff and Muffins, just running rampant in the early game, finding so much engage. And then when you look at the damage graphs here, look at the damage that Blankiora put out. 24k. Far and away the most damage in this game. Yeah, he was unbelievably proactive on that champion. Uh, even though most people don't really credit Lissandra as a strong pick, he uh, was able to get that roaming pressure off, able to double teleport behind that team twice, yeah, I think, and I think two aces for that play. Were incredibly coordinated from TK, really impressive from Blank Yora and from Better on Top to pull off those plays. Yeah, like what I see there from TK, and I think uh, the new dogs coming into this league always trying to show off their stuff. They lost last week to who was that? Was it they lost to Gothboy Click last week in oh, a two zero. Well, as a, I think TK and Gothboy Click are both new teams. Yeah, they're both new yeah. teams. So they're trying. So they're beating a, one of these uh, old dogs here in IRL. They've been here for four it's, seasons now at least. So they're. I mean, I do showing it's, off. It's four new teams, right? TK, Gothboy Click, Spell It Chat, and Rabbit Raccoons, right? Yes, you're uh, correct. 
Yeah, and I think I've seen games out of all four of those teams, uh, or at least I might have played against. Yeah, I played against Galpoy Click in the play-in. Uh, yeah, all four of those teams really, really aggressive. They definitely know what their game plan is when they want to play. Absolutely. Spectate here. There you are. Diamond four. My goodness. Yeah, That's I think I'm in my. You. I think I'm in promos. Actually, I can actually do those, shouldn't I? I'm in, I'm in promos to gold five in place. Oh, because nice. I'm not playing solo with you anymore because I get too tilted. <laughs> the key is just muting everybody. That's the key. Just destroy the nexus. Oh, yeah, I'm in promos for D3, but uh, looks like I'm at a 0 1. I don't remember the last yeah. time I actually played ranked. That it must have been less than a week that ago. There, that just means that there's two more wins waiting for you. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Would be nice to get to D3. Okay, so. Let's flip it on its head here. What do we want to see come out from IRL in response? I want to see the uh, IRL bot lane boldly the uh, quote unquote weaker players and opposing the Kathy one harder. Uh, I think Notorious Gad has some high expectations coming in for himself as the best AD in the league. And so he's going to ready for us. He's going to have to. Uh, I think he needs to get a stronger uh, lane presence here. I think. Do you take Zinzao off the board now? I because yeah, I think was, so. Was Graves up that entire time in champ select? Um, it might have been. Yeah, I think it was actually. I'm kind of surprised that the Zinzao pick was prioritized over the Graves, but it definitely worked out really well. Graves definitely have having more damage, but Zinzao. With a really reliable engage. Actually, no. I slow. think I think IRL did ban the graves. Okay. Because uh. I just can't remember talking about the ban. Well, isn't it like graves, Oriana and Talia first phase bans? Oh no, it was Irelia. No, so graves was, is open. Yeah, it was Irelia, Talia. Anyhow, looks like we're about to get into champ select here. Um, I think I think IRL might want to go with a more standard comp. Yeah, At definitely. Least, um, don't don't blind pick your mid laner. <laughs> yeah, don't blind pick your mid laner. Don't or pick Holy you, Bear, unless you have you like other have main pick, engage. If you do have to blind pick your mid laner, pick something that probably relatively safe. Yeah, a safer pick that has more impact. Doesn't need to scale as hard. Corky just needs to scale really really hard. Same, I think. Same bands, different sides so far. Yeah, I think it's it's a good idea to ban the uh, Kaisa and the Lucian. You don't want to give Notorious yeah, GD a huge pop-off okay. champion. I was a bit concerned about the Ezreal getting through, but they made it work by just deleting him every time he got the chance. Yeah, but that was the Lissandra pick. Right. Right now, I think. But yeah, exact same three bans from both teams. There's not any like, any real adjustment. Camille first Whoa. pick this time. They really like this Camille pick. They really like the uh, ability to engage pretty freely. Work, work, work around the Camille TPs. Yeah, get the teleport. Better on top, better on top Blink Yora had really good TPs. Morgana pick again, coming through here. <laughs> so the bot lane of IRL just taking yeah, it so, away so like, from hey, 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 hey. They're taking it you, away man. from Take. Haha, -ha, get it? Yeah, I get it. Uh, but I feel like take King would be take King. Take, uh, take yeah. King. <laughs> no, I, I, I understand. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think I, it would be more appropriate if take took the comp from yeah uh, IRL. <laughs> Although if, I think if take took the comp from IRL, that's just BM because it's a bad comp. Let's be honest. Ooh, same three topside <laughs> champion picks. On the side of Take potentially. Do they want to go for the same exact top three? I don't know if they want to blind pick their mid. They should just grab an, an AD carry, I think. Or a Karma. So um, Karma's. I like the Karma here because it is a flex pick. Is yeah. a good matchup into the Morgana. And has really good pressure in mid lane. So I like this a lot from Take It's a smart pick. Although I do appreciate the Lissandra hover. Yeah, I appreciate it. I think he played super well. And I think like he exceeded all expectations. For uh, what that champion typically does, which is not a lot. Pick coming through again for Soto. Soto does well on Trundles. Wait, banning away Lissandra for sure definitely means they don't want. The oh yeah, 
Yeah, they don't want to give away that Lissandra pick. That freedom that Lissandra had in that game to roam was quite good. I, and they picked I Trundle again, think, which is interesting. I, I think Trundle pick here is not that great. Yeah, like the Zin Graves Zin is up, Zin but Xin Xiao does do well in the Graves. I think uh, yeah, I Soto is historically is that... a tankier player. Yeah, well, well, what I was going to say is I don't think that Trundle necessarily is the best pick into Karma, Xin Zhao, Camille. Also, like, you already know the AD carry is not going to, definitely not necessarily going to be a tank, uh, which just means the support can still be an enchanter. Also, Trundle doesn't have yeah. a great target to subjugate for that armor and MR bonus. So I yeah, I think TK are in a super good spot right here in this draft. Shen taken off the board. Shen taken off the board, Fiora taken off the board. We'll have to see what he goes for. And there's the Scion. Uh, not a good matchup into the... Well, it's a good matchup early game, but this uh, Camille quickly... Uh, is able to really dominate that side lane pressure. Oh. Wait. Like, honestly, still those both of those things are flexible as either mid or support. Um, this could be a brand ADC, right? Brand. Right. ADC are we gonna see some funky lane? stuff going on? Are we gonna see the uh, new bot lane meta? What are we, what are we waiting for? really interesting, but we'll see. We'll see here with the with Kathy's pick. What is the last pick going to be? An Oriana! Oh, it's a brand bot! It's a brand, it's a brand bot! bot Pog champ! Give me some Pog champs in the chat. AK going crazy! I like pick. this. <laughs> I like this a lot. There's a lot of magic damage in that bot lane for that Morgana. Uh, Jin can't really deal with that damage Brand puts out, the harass. Yeah, they're the... gonna shove the they're, they're gonna shove the lane into Jin all day long. Jin not the best at pushing waves out. They the already game. like they already have some physical damage. They don't have to go entirely like they don't need to have an AD carry bot lane. This is yeah, this is actually an intensely difficult amount of damage to itemize against. Because this is a double magic damage bot lane. Maybe you see Morgana max black shield because there's so much more. <laughs> yeah, I would not be surprised if they did that, but Morgana's damage per level on that Q is so strong, I think you might just need to, uh, like, max both at I mean, the same can, time. If you can abuse it, sure. But I don't think... I can't see a Morgana trying to out-pressure a Brand Karma. You actually see Brand opposing sticking with TP here. And I think that's pretty solid. I think, uh... I, I actually think this uh, Brand pick is really, really good into the Morgana, especially even more so than the Jinx because she wants to walk well, up in pressure, but if you have yeah, so much range magic... Melt in the face. Yeah. In the face of uh, Brand Karma. Karma and Brand are both like Morgana counters. Oh, wait, Brand switched to uh, Clint at the last second. Oh, uh, okay, that's, not, that's a good idea. Yeah. Although I was kind of hyped to see the TP. Triple TP. Yeah. You actually, saw, you actually see Oriana switch to Cleanse as well, which is a... Uh, Darn shame. This is cool because I haven't, I haven't really seen any brand bot like anywhere, like like bottom lane brand, not like support brand. I mean, well, with the changes to like, okay, so there's just so many things that work in brand's favor in the past few, like let's say years. Changes to his passive, making it so that you're rewarded for hitting three spells, or you don't your spells multiple. In the case of your ultimate, affecting the target more than once. Um, the Leandre's change. Seriously benefiting Brand. Oh yeah. Doing percent max health damage for dots, and Brand's passive is a dot. Yeah, and I assume so, he'll just build like Leandri's or uh, Ludens into Leandri's, and then Rylai's. Uh, I mean, you, Lichbane? You Do you go Rylai's? Lichbane if you're bottling lane because you want to have some more tower killing damage? Maybe, but like I, what I was going to say is, you build Rylai's against this comp, Morgana becomes useless. If you build what? Rylai's as oh, brand into yeah. this comp. Like, because Morgana can only black shield one person. Uh, the fireball, you know, for Brand's ultimate, I don't know the name of it. Uh, just gonna bounce around to everyone, do AoE damage. Yeah, the amount of gold that you need, you don't really need that much gold to be useful because you have so much percent damage. And once you get that, the, uh, the three spells popping off in a team fight on everybody, just so much damage. 
And uh, IRL's bot lane is definitely going to be thrown for a loop here, and they're going to have to uh, think about these, uh, think about very sh quickly how they should play this bottom lane matchup. Because when was the last time that Notorious Gad played versus uh, a brand Karma lane? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say part of the factor psychologically of playing here is just going to be, man, how do we deal with a double AP bot lane? Like, do you actually see a mob Malmordius <laughs> No, absolutely not. Because then he would hey, just do man. no damage. It gives it gives magic resist and lifesteal. Does it give attack? No, it doesn't give attack speed to it, right? No. No, it just gives like AD and magic resist and then like the shield. <laughs> Well, I mean, I will. I would say though that it's nice to see the adjustment from IRL. You have consistent engage with Scion. You have wave clear from Anivia. Um, you have a little bit of pick potential off of Jin Morgana. Um, what I will criticize them for, and this is something I saw last week in one of the matches, Trundle does not have synergy on Z's convergence with Jin. It's it's just bad and. When you consider the rest of the comp, there is no one else that he can really put Zeke's Convergence onto, which is just... I don't know why you picked Trundle here. I don't know why Soto decided to go for Trundle. Yeah, and I actually want to question the Jin pick, too, because in that first rotation, you could have picked uh, a jungler, maybe? You could have picked... Um, well, maybe they were worried yeah, about just a different giving over the same bot lane. Yeah. I think they were worried about giving over the same bot lane. Yeah, so in that case, if we're assuming that, then we definitely want to question the Trundle, because Zeke's Convergence is not a super effective item right here with the uh, with the Jin. Mm -hmm. I like the uh, idea there, but rushing Banner instead of... Uh, Zeke's. Well, I mean, it's a good thing that Banner got nerfed, and apparently next patch it's getting removed from the game. Yeah, right. Probably the design team is really good. To balance as an item, it's, it's well, a really interesting item. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty balanced back when it was just like it only was resistant to magic damage, but now that it's totally like yeah, but I think totally I think beefed like, up. I think to everything. realized that the item is either never built at all, other than in the earth, and it's not even allowed to be built in there anymore, <laughs> or it's or it's just too good. It's one of those items. And it's I been mean, too good for quite a while now. You see the five stack coming out here from IRL. Wonder, wondering what they're trying to do here. Maybe looking for a brush cheese, but I think they're going to get spotted out. Yeah, actually, Brand yeah, by himself. Right there, he sees it, but I, ooh, instant oh. cleanse and flash out. Okay, um, nice, nice from Oppose in there. I don't like sitting in that bush as a bot laner uh, because I mean, I of that was... reason. But that, that was, was a, nice a good position. That was a nice cleanse, honestly. Yeah, that definitely saved him. And the good positioning from IRL's team there, coming from around that bush, uh, the way they did. I mean, yeah, so that opposer can't you know, actually he, see them coming see until it. it's too late. Yeah. But after that, forcing out the bot lane flashes, looks like IRL is just going to assign normal. Um, so, what I would do in this case. Okay, never mind, because they, he ended up warding the brush on his way out. I was going to say. Well, even on the other side of this, after you, after you quote unquote fail the invade. You go the other way because then you know they probably haven't awarded it. Right. It's it's a bit of a cheat. It's like it's a double cheese in vain if you think about it, but it's pretty interesting. <laughs> One thing to think about know, finding, finding that in, uh, that buffed Q onto Blank Yora here put him down to like sixty percent health with just the Q and the auto. I've been told that it's pronounced Blank E Roja, but ooh, in the mid lane. Blank E Roja, ooh. I'm sorry I don't. Blake is supposed to flash away. Blake forced to flash away. It's nothing, nothing. Just so proactive on the Zin Zhao, looking for the level 2 gank again. Yeah, it's the second time there's been a level 2 gank. And it's, oh, I do look see at that Blank damage. It's quite a bit. Double root going onto Kathy, taking a lot of damage. 
I, I don't like W engine at all. I think you should go Q first. But oh, here's a trundle gang. No flash. Flash off. Flash binding misses, but I think he's. Oh! oh no. Tilt! Oh, no. Tilt! Oh my the flash god! Is so delayed. Oh my god! Oh dear! Daddy and the whore missing the dark binding. There was all the difference to is necessary. That's actually tragic. I he can't believe he's done this. Not only did the opponent survive. Oh, mid gank. Okay, Rojas. Oh, he gets chopped oh, down. Okay, and dies anyway. But, oh my lord. Oh my gosh, that that was bad. <laughs> I, I I don't think there's any other way of saying it. That's just bad. That was you really like bad. It. And this guy is this guy has a lot of expectations riding on this uh, on this team. Oh wow, it's a Chow. Flash forward by it's nothing muffin. Yeah, but he's no no follow up and Trundle's coming to help him. Yeah, but that's no no, that's gonna be the kill onto the Oh. Oh no. Oh, okay, oh, he gets the wow. kill, but man, that was sad. Yeah, and Trundle is coming and he would have died he was about to die hundred percent, but he's lucky that he got that kill. Cause otherwise uh it would have been a, a turnaround for for the IRL. Level of sadness in this game is just incredible at the moment. This is a British GAZ getting really zoned off by the by the brand here. Pillar of Flame just doing a lot of work. Yeah, and actually the uh, the door entering change that was hap that happened a couple patches ago where you get on hit damage, it actually uh, makes a lot of sense now that mages can be played bottom lane because now they have an easier time to last hit. Yeah, but I, didn't they say they were going to? Oh no, no, they were going to face something else. That was my bad. Yeah, they were going to uh, because they removed 4AD from all the AD carries. Yeah. They're gonna. They're gonna add that back. Kathy gotta be a little bit careful. She's taking a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah, uh, Daddy for no no a, other. Down onto her. Yeah, no trade damage just for Kathy to get taken down almost a full. But Kathy should just recall. She's got a lot of gold. Yeah. I don't know why she's staying in lane here. Like <laughs> that's so low. I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised that. I guess um, they're just gonna try to go for a push. Is, has almost roughly. Eagle CS if he can get all of this here. Looks like he's gonna miss out on Yeah, it. I think he'll 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 be uh, just about even, maybe even up like one. Oh no, he'll be down well, one CS if he gets all of it. that he gets all of it, which I think he's missing. Trundle showing butt again, he's really giving a lot of support Soto, to this bottom lane. The other thing that you can also see is that Soto's out of mana. It's not that much of a threat for a gank at the So the bot lane right now the dynamic is pretty interesting just because the support of IRL is really high and the support of uh, take is pretty to low. Gank onto the oh. Scion there. He can't charge the Q up. This is almost... No, it's not going to be a death on Fat Rat. Really good discipline for him to not flash out there. Daddy in the horse. Oh, the Inspire W. Binding onto Kathy, but Inspire W keeps him alive. But Trundle's just coming back. No flash on Kathy. This time he has the mana for the gank. Kathy's probably going to die here. Oh, he's going to live? Oh, the oh. root just got him. TP though. TP coming out from on better on top, looking for the stun onto Daddy in the horse. Oh, nice. Off. Now double stun for opposing. What? You could have just auto attacked yeah, and killed wait, him. You just... <laughs> oh, oh Brand! Flash fireball to the face. And Snuffy Muffin's just like. Snuffy Muffin's so. Really impressive. annoying, uh, Fat Rat right now. But, like, he's taking a lot of damage for it. <laughs> and this Brand AD carry. Botlane Brand, 3-0 right now. I mean, look, opposing, he was like, look, man, I LARP all the time, fireball. <laughs> <laughs> he just came back from a sweet night of D&D with the boys and wanted to play the uh, the mage botlane. Yeah, definitely. You can tell that boy just played some D&D. &D. Uh, a bit of a lull in action. Oh, and uh, Brand is actually there. rushing Rylai's. Kathy looking for the engaged. Get, uh, instead gets engaged. Oh on. no, Kathy, check yourself, so, Kathy. Walking forward. Ooh, the, ta the pathway gets blocked. There's the stun. That's gonna be Kathy. Chomp. Going Kill steal. Pseudo. Kill steal. <laughs> hey, you gotta get the, you gotta get the <laughs> Now, I think it's... Where did Soto? Yeah, Soto going a bit forward on the invade here. 
I think it would be prudent for him to hand over the blue buff. You see a ping go down onto it. Because eh. Anivia... Yeah. Anivia apparently got hit really hard by the changes of the map uh, for mid laners. Yeah, apparently. So, blue buff, that much more important on her. Yeah, blue buff always yeah, like actually, one of the staples for having a successful Anivia game. Roha with a dark spiel? Yep. That's a lot of extra mana regen. Uh, sustain in lane, so. So. It's like kind of like a coal I, that you buy if you're a mid laner and you don't have enough gold. So, what I will say is that. Um, the mastery time warp tonic plus kleptomancy plus dark seal and any potions just make your potions ridiculously strong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it does. And that makes dark seal even better. Blanca, I don't think Blanca Roja quite has that going on right now but you actually have an like, you actually have a disgusting amount of sustain in lane especially if you take total biscuits yeah uh oh damage. blanky roja has a scion coming his way and oh we can Ooh, that's a really nice flash from blanky roja the that was a really nice pillar wait really no nice it's pillar. the pillars from his own teammate yeah so uh well, i mean blanky oh, okay, he kept I him in, he guess. kept him in place yeah, yeah. otherwise he probably could have dodged that scion ulti without flashing but good instincts to flash that would have certainly died otherwise. This game actually is pretty much relative parity. Uh -oh. That was a really good dodge from better on top of, against the smash, but I think Fat Rat goes down no matter what here. Even had to burn it, even burn the splash this time. Probably should have just let himself die. Yeah, Snuff of Muffins. Of his fist. Snuff of Muffins following his flash. Him. Gets that kill. I think, uh,. Free take here in a pretty comfortable position once again. They've got a big CS lead in the mid lane. They had a CS deficit in the, in the top lane, but Camille did get uh, some pressure in the bottom lane with the teleport. So yeah. Camille has out pressured the Scion. Mm -hmm. So looking at farm here, it's actually kind of interesting to see that Hide on Blake is at such a massive disadvantage, almost 20 CS down. And you actually see the same case going for Fat Rat and better on top and top lane. Fat Rat's almost up 30 CS. The only the only CS lead. Uh oh, Snuff of Muffins has to be careful. Been out of position here, I think. He has the dodge, ultimate still though. Think it goes down, Snuff of Muffins. And I think he's just dead. Here, flash chomp for the slow. Better on top, not quite there for the for the sweep. Yeah, and there's no Hextech ultimatum, so it's not like they can actually win that 2v2. They're, uh, really Seven beefy. Nothing's just really out of position. I don't really taking a lot of damage from missing abilities. Oh, the Shockwave. Shockwave goes on top. I don't really may pop passive, but it doesn't look There's also good. the Curtain Call in the bottom lane, interestingly yep. enough. Zorius GAD pops Curtain Call, I think, for Wave Clear, actually. Because there's very little damage onto either Cathy or a Pope. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. But with things being, with, with the gold lead being practically non existent at this point, as the game transitions forward, how do you see the fight split playing out? Well, I think uh, IRL are at a bit of a disadvantage in fights right now. If there is a full team fight, uh, the front line of IRL will have to uh, play pretty well. To soak up a lot of damage to let that Jin and, Ani and Anivia fight hard. But there's just so much extra damage that they have from Takei's side. But on the other side, I would say that if you find a good Scion engage onto any member of their team, especially the brand, um, Takei does not have the freest comp. Freest comp? What do you mean by that? Like, Takei doesn't have. Like the tankiest comp, they don't have the freedom to fight very long. Zin's out, yes, you have engaged, you have your ultimate. But. Uh oh, you mid lane fight. Going? Ooh, blank your blank your Roja. This entirely smashed down there. That trundle hurts. Yeah, I mean, maximum shot. Definitely gonna do so. And if you're hitting the uh, stun also is pretty important there. They're gonna look for the mid lane tower, maybe, but there's only one wave, they can't really. Deal the whole damage. They can get it. Trundle, oh Trundle yeah, you're right. Giving himself the attack speed, they buffed his chomp to hit towers again. Definitely more than enough power to do so. 
Sin Shao's gonna go oh, in. Sin Shao, <laughs> using his ultimate to save the tower. Uh, not gonna quite save the turret. Cause... No, I mean, he saved it for a few more seconds, but you don't see Blanky Roja making it back here anytime soon. I think that's kind of a waste of ultimate. Time. Yeah, that was a waste of time spent by Snuffa Muffins. But it looked cool. Style points. He styled on him. Didn't get anything out of it, but the style. Yeah, he, he did this whole spin to win. Right? <laughs> he spun him, he knocked him back. Kathy looking for engage, but yeah, you see the dark, you see the black shield on Morgana keeping Notorious GAD relatively well alive. Throwing out yeah. the fine things in response. Grant has the Rhyolize, so they're just gonna walk in the lane. The yeah, current call is gonna curtain get popped. Call, but I don't think it's hitting anything. Yeah, it missed. Oh no, I think he missed almost every shot. He missed three shots, I'm pretty sure. Jin has no mana, so he's just trying to get a recall off, but now they're in a bad position. Kathy taken down a little instantaneously, but Grant able to toss out his ultimate makes everyone else back off. Support for support. Well, as you can see, it's IRL that is actually eking out a pretty small lead here. 2k, or 1.2k, my bad. Yeah, and that's all due to the uh, mid lane tower that was taken. Blanky Roja is looking for a dive, but they don't see the Anivia that's following them. And there's also a top lane fight going on. But I'm just going to focus on the bottom side right now, because Blanky Roja yeah, and... Looks like Blanky Roja, they're spotted out by the Lord. They there is! Oh, shockwave! Gosh, command Shockwave! Trundle staying alive a bit longer here, goes down eventually. Sin Chow! Snuffin' Muffins, flash forward onto the, onto the Jin. Sin kills the Jin with all his moves in Sin Chow. Yeah, and uh... IRL just lost a huge amount of advantage right there. Yeah, the gold lead completely shifted. In I'm better on top. I'm better on top solo killing Fat Rat, and they're getting, they got the dive off in the bot lane, they got the tower, and the dragon. So, huge swing and tempo a, for Fat Rat, or a free TK. Like, it's a free Cloud Drake. TK, whatever, man. You got you got, you got Cloud Drake. Whatever. I'm sure, I'm sure that's the way, the way you have to psych yourself up for it. <laughs> but Cloud Dragon, <laughs> Cloud Dragon's pretty nice. It uh, lets you get no, some it, extra Roman off. really great on Zinzao, actually. Oh yeah, he also has a mobility boost too. Hide on Blake, getting a really decent amount of burst damage onto Kathy. Looking to keep going here. I guess it's because they have vision of Zin Zhao. Yeah. Don't have to be scared of any awkward pathing. But in the top lane, you see Fat Rat just pushing this tower down. He doesn't really care about the damage that I'm better on top of him putting out. Fat Rat can kill him if he just... <laughs> yeah, there's the kill. Well, here's Brand, right Pyroclasm. Here. He's dead. Yeah. But I don't really think Fat Rat cares. If I were him, I'd just... <laughs> Save the, the turret! Oh, he no, saved it! <laughs> but this uh, Jin right now is left uncontested to take this turret. In bot lane? But it yeah. will take him a bit. Jin, not the fastest turret take. And this tower is practically full health. I don't think he's gonna get it. Yeah, Karma's gonna look for the rope, but Karma can't really defend by herself. Morgana's gonna show up too. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily so much as defending when you see... Oh, here comes, uh, I'm better on top, too. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, Karma missed well, Unlucky. The That's really bad. Yeah, the tower won't go down quite yet. Yeah, but still. Tied on Blake, taking a lot of damage here. Soto comes in for the, oh. for the defense. Pops the Anivia passive. Blanky Roja running away. Think this Trundle. Subjugate. Subjugate, chomping. Man. Uh, Orion, doing her best with command dissonance, but it's not quite working. Uh oh. Kathy probably gonna get oh, Notorious GAD! No. Notorious GAD gets his ultimate, or cancels his ultimate when he sees his teeth. Uh oh. He sees Better on Top walk in here. That's a good dodge out from Better on Top, but I don't think it does very much for him. Now, yeah, you see Hide on Blake flash forward with him. <laughs> and, uh, things are getting a little bit sloppy here. Uh, yeah, I'm better on top goes for the play. Blanky Roja gets caught out too. Fiesta. Uh Okay, well now IRL once again having a bit of a small advantage getting that tower. But take that tower away, things are practically even once again. Yeah, they're gonna go for the tier two bottom lane turret. I they think definitely get it here without some doubt. But oh. yeah, well, He's going for it. Nothing nothing's going for the same move again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any magic damage, so knockup doesn't go through because of the Morgana Black Shield. 
Okay, Zinzar does have magic damage. So it's not good. <laughs> I believe you his E what? is magic damage. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's why I said, yeah, he does. But, <laughs> hey, let's not talk about that. So once you've maxed your E, about... it might be able to... Uh... I mean, I think he did put... I think he did oh, put no. points into E. Or he actually he has... He didn't. actually has only one he point maxed. in the E. Yeah, thought, you maxed two. I thought he put points into uh, E to yeah. increase the slow. Yeah, I thought... I actually think the slow is, I think it's constant now, but I think the burst damage is pretty nice to be max E, but that's, I think, I'm thinking of the old Zinshaw probably. Yeah, uh, I, I don't play Zinshaw very often, so. I used to play him a lot when he was like, the meta jungler with Jarvan in season 3 and 4, that's when I would play him a lot. He used to be a jungle main, but Sion's looking for a fight mid. Yeah, Sion misses his ultimate, doesn't find any knockup, but Soto gets the kill onto Karma. And uh, Kathy's gotta watch their positioning, uh, cause she's gonna count out a yeah. lot. It's kinda hard for it's kinda hard for TK to disengage. They like Kathy's just like disrespecting the Anivia. Well, hey, Kathy's just hug. Don't Oh no, that's true. Don't so hate on Kathy, man. Well hey, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> but you are right, four deaths. <laughs> I feel like every uh, every minute I'm seeing her like getting hit by an Anivia Q and then like getting walled. But anyway, yeah, so looking at the brand build, that's exactly what I was talking about. You want to go Riley the Andrew. No oh no. Ten on the build. Hosen might be getting caught out here. Command distance gives him some movement speed. Command protect gives him the armor and MR. Hey, they Stay blocked the, the shots for him. Call. Unlike what last game. Made. I know, right? But uh, well, Blank Hiroha looking for the ultimate. There it is. It's a good ultimate, but I don't think he can get anything quite done. Oh, nothing, nothing doesn't care. Oh. He just goes in. He just goes in and smashes the fight away. Says and he's that's not afraid to fight. Three kills. It's almost like TK said, "Oh, casters, you thought Brand was the real problem? No, it's Snuffin Muffins." When it's Snuffin Muffins. And yeah, you don't uh, want to mess with Snuffin Muffins when he has his Zin Zhao lays. Zin Zhao has been quite a problem in, in both of these games. And Jin cannot clear this wave. No. Too much threat <laughs> pressure. Zin, or Jin not having the greatest amount of wave clear. Yeah, especially versus Camille and Zin Zhao. It's uh, quite ridiculous how much engage they have, how much uh, damage straight up they have. But not a huge gold lead, about 2k in 20 minutes. I mean, I think I think IRL can still win this game. It's been, it's certainly been way closer than last time. Yeah, it's winnable, but they don't really outscale Take. I don't think. Like Jin has to pop off really hard, or Nivia has to pop off really hard, because. The amount of sheer damage that Take has compared to what IRL will have late game is massive. Oh yeah, I just realized this. Karma actually doesn't need to rush hard and sensor because there's no AD. To get to oh yeah, you just go straight up Unholy Grail and get that extra yeah. healing and shielding. And you actually get AP because of your mana reach. <laughs> yeah, but IRL, they're gonna grab a Mountain Dragon that's uncontested. Great. Pretty shocking that they uh, got that dragon without any contest from Take. Well, I just don't think TK was quite in the position for it. He sees Zin's out there, but none of the rest of his teammates can, uh, can do anything. They also just don't have the vision set up around Dragon, so committing to face check would also have been terrible. Hmm. Looking at the items, this this brand has so much gold right now. Yeah, he's Leandri's and Rylai's with the with the blasting wands on, the, on his landing opponent. He might now, just go straight up Void Staff third. Yeah, I mean, would Void Staff be super efficient? You don't see a lot of MR on the side of, uh, what do you call it? Or on the side of Um, IRL. There's a good amount of magic resists. The uh, I mean, Scion has some... the banner and the treads. This uh, Trundle has Spectre's Cow and no magic, but here's an engage. That's a really good flash from Blanky Roja. Kathy's still a bit out of position, but it seems like he can walk it out. Uh, what and I was Camille. going to say is, uh, Opposin could very easily just go for the Grievous Wounds item, uh, Morella Namakon, for Magic Man. I think it's just... Yeah, it's true. There's, uh, there's not a ton of work. healing. I think, it, I think it would still work pretty well, overall. Yeah. We'll have to see what he builds with it, because he can build a lot of different items with this Blasting Wand. I'm, I'm surprised that he didn't build any mana items, because right now his base mana is 925. 
His yeah, W he costs 100 out. mana. Yeah, he so like out of mana after two, pretty much two spell rotations in Ultimate. I, I'm very surprised he didn't go for like a Ludens Echo first item because he I really mean, has yeah, very little I, mana sustain. Well, I think the Ride Landry's combo is just so attractive. And it's like, good. As long as, you're, as long as you're playing against more than one champion. Like, I think if it's mid lane brand, yes, you should definitely be going to lose second first. But if you're in bot lane, oh man, like Rylai's or Rylonomic, or not Rylonomicon, uh, Rylai's or Leandri's, and then having both, especially as the game transitions into a team fight phase, pretty important. Now, what I will say is that with support You still brands, want mana either way, though. Yeah, like support brands don't necessarily go for mana because they have a little bit of mana sustain from their item. But. Hey, you know, oh, give it the blue buff. Now he has the blue buff, and you know what? He has mana regen from his Dorans. <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, he's got the mana from the Dorans, and he's got the uh, five mana per second. So yeah, totally OP, by the way. Pretty good. But yeah, you know, now with his blue buff, he doesn't quite have to worry about spellcast. He gets a little CDR. Um. Game pacing wise seems to have stalled out a bit. Neither team seems to yeah. be grouping for objectives. Are they waiting for Baron, maybe? I don't think so, don't but think, uh, they do. I don't think there's quite an opportunity for either team to take it. Yeah, not not yet. They have to get a really clean team fight for them to actually sneak Baron. The uh, brand, um, of course, will have a lot of damage on Baron, but there's no consistent like auto attack damage. It looks like you're right. It looks like a both is going for void stuff. Yeah, it looks like it. But th there, is, there is a good amount of magic resist. And oh, Brand Ooh, just misses the Q. Flash, finds the Rylai's proc. Oh no. no. Pyroclasm, opponent's probably gonna die here. That was a great command Oh, Shockwave. From Blanky Roha. Now opposing using his teammates as a shield. Yeah. Notorious shield. Scion? Incredibly low. Scion looking for the engage. Where was he during the <laughs> That was not a terrible engage, but there's nothing he can do follow-up wise. Tries to run away for a moment there, if you looked at that. Yeah, and uh, that's the team fight that Take A wanted to get the Baron. <laughs> Brand almost killed Take uh, uh, Notorious GAD even without hitting the yeah, stun. Even without the pirate class and without bouncing to anyone, without the uh, the passive process, the passive proc and Notorious GAD. Hundred percent. Yeah. Now they're at that 5k gold lead. 25 minutes into the game. Yep, and this is uh, where the game breaks open. Look at the ultimate cooldowns. Camille's Hextech ultimatum, more than half, or about halfway. Uh, Xin Zhao, his ultimate's almost back up. Shockwave just comes back up. Mantra, not quite the actual ultimate. Pyroclasm about to come back up. And then on the other side of this, Zion ultimate down. The old, uh, Anivia ultimate, uh, always, pretty much always up. <laughs> Curtain call down. Morgana's ultimate down. If KK wants to force a fight, they should do it as fast as possible, abuse the fact that their opponents don't have uh, their ultimates off CD quite yet. But it doesn't look like they're going for that, looks like they want to play it a bit slower. Yeah, and if his ulti's on cooldown, and it's not anymore. So their window's gone. Kappa. I'm... Honestly, if I were to talk about anything though, I think Blanky Roja is the absolute hero of that last fight. Oh yeah. The, the time he needed to get to safety, especially finding that. Oh, there's oh, the another engage. Finding onto a potion. Blanket Roja tanks up one hit. Ooh, so much DC coming out. Oh, nice shockwave. Pyroclasm. The trundle looks like the pyroclasm <laughs> ends up killing him. Potion <laughs> falls. He subjugate. Still, he still falls to the subjugate in the end though. Yeah, and that's three kills for. For TK and Zin Xiao just solo splitting in the top lane. Jin has yeah, to be a bit careful. A, practically 5v4, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a 5v4. I like the now, play from IRL though. They're trying to they were trying to just yeah, engage to before the waves proactive. pushed in. Yeah, trying to stay proactive. Unfortunately, with with the cleanse, opposing was able to stay alive long enough to cast his ultimate able to kill the trundle. Yeah, and and if, if you yeah, and if you can't do anything to defend the turrets, then what you have to do is you just have to engage. So they tried it, they uh, didn't quite succeed there, but it's better than doing nothing and losing all three hips slowly. Snuff and Muffins, I think, is gonna die yeah. here. <laughs> Jin's just outrunning him right here. And the, oh, the pillar he almost is, messed up. Wait, the, the pillar! Best. 
Okay. <laughs> Zin Xiao should have probably used his ultimate at one point, but you see his never mind. Just walking forward there. Flanky Roja looking for the ocean drake. Wants that sustain. <laughs> The Cloud Drake coming up next. No, nothing really uh, offensive in terms of Drake's spots. Uh, Mountain Drake not really being used at this point by IRL. Yeah. Ocean Dragon is pretty solid though. Uh, will help them sustain a lot. Oh yeah. And I don't think they're not going to be too picky about free objects at, the, at this point. They I mean, have an inhibitor. If anything, you see, like, bot lane in the favor of TK is just going to be pushing it towards IRL. They still have Baron buff up for a little bit. They should just be trying to pressure uh, mid and then rotate top to finish off the tower. Because the mid inhibitor is already exposed. Brand taking the blue buff, isn't that nice? Yeah. AD carry is taking blue buff. He's not an AD carry, though. That's the beauty of it all. It's beautiful. You know, I'll just call him an AD carry because he's in the fourth slot there. Looks like he wants to get a dead cap next. Yeah, absolutely. And here comes Camille. Not gonna get the hook shot off. But now there's so much pressure for free take A. They want to be a little bit careful because their Camille's not there, but she has teleport. And here comes Scion. They're Scion looking to engage immediately. Gets onto opposing, but there's no follow-up damage from his team. Oh, Oriana ult. Blanky Roja finds a really good command shockwave onto two. Now Fat Rat drops. <laughs> nothing, nothing goes forward, finds it onto Daddy in the horse. Fat Rat still trying to disrupt, but he can't do anything <laughs> with his passive. Now Hide on Blake falls, this is absolutely game. Gonna be a 2-0 for TK. And that's definitely going to be it, a 2-0, and a pretty clean 2-0 at that. Both games before Stop 30 minutes are over. Out with a little bit of BM in the chat. <laughs> Too easy, he said. Oh, damn. And uh, that's well, going to be it. That's... That's actually just a bit slower than the second game. It's like, what, 10 Very seconds slower than the previous game? 20 seconds. 20 seconds slower than the previous game. TK showing his son some signs of weakness. <laughs> a bit slower. <laughs> oh, no. I think I think this game might have been a bit different if uh, if Notorious GAD had found that flash auto onto opposing. <laughs> yeah, that was or, a bit tragic. The flash auto, if Daddy Nahor's Dark Binding had landed properly. Yeah, and uh, IRL definitely did not play super well. I think Soto had a pretty stand-up performance in the game, but you can't really keep your team in it for that long uh, as a I trundle mean, when your lanes are all losing. Yeah, he actually did surprisingly well. Like, Zin Xiao, really Zin Xiao has been a crazy strong pick in both of these games. I would say he's pro this, this Zin is probably the uh, most impactful champion of this series. I would say. I mean, look, snuff and muffins. All he wanted to do was Zin it to. Zen it to win it. Zen it to win it. And IRL, <laughs> IRL let him do it because they left it open twice. Yeah, no, he played. I think, I think, maybe they thought they could punish him for playing aggressively. And in some cases, I think they really did. It's just that as the game goes on, yeah, if you look at the damage chart, it's actually not just opposing on Brand. It's also Blanky Roja finding those key ultimates. Last game did insane amounts of damage as Lissandra. This time doing insane amounts of damage to Oriana. Having so much AoE uh, on your mid laner and then your mid laner efficiently using that AoE to smash team fights definitely was like the tail of two team fights or two two uh, games in this match. Yeah, I think uh, Oriana is one of Blanky Roja's best champions, and I think people have to respect that in drafts in drafts that are uh, moving forward because interestingly if you look at the I think he's really chart, solid so if you look at the damage chart for IRL you see that Trundle Anivia and Jin almost did the exact same damage oh yeah wow yeah <laughs> they were uh, all within 100 damage isn't that neat <laughs> hey man that's teamwork that's letting your teammates do equal amounts of carry <laughs> <laughs> carrying to that L <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's bring somebody in here from Take for an interview on their first ever Prophecy Cup victory, and uh, I don't know. I don't know who Romania is. 
I don't know who these guys are actually in Discord. Their names are not the same. Yeah. Um. Who is uh who's snuffing muffins on Discord? I think it's Peru. I think or Peru no, is Blakey Roja. Blakey Roja is Peru. Hey, I'm gonna move in there. All right, wish me luck. Hey, which one of you is the uh, jungler? Oh, uh, we got the we got the clout. Me. Okay, all right, I'm moving you up. Give me a couple seconds. Uh, what? You've been chosen. <laughs> You've been chosen. Right? All right, I'm bringing him in against his will. Watch all right, me. we got him. Against his will. All right, he is now forced to talk to us for like three minutes. I mean, strictly speaking, he could just disconnect. But... No, no, that'd yeah. be too easy. <laughs> but uh, what's up, Snuff and Muffins? How was the uh, How was the series? Uh, it was all right. I don't know why. Uh... Well, I don't know. I, I don't think they drafted well when they didn't perform well in the, on, in the first game, like with their champions. Yeah. They ended the same draft. Yeah, actually. It was their, um, like, uh, oh, like it was just their play style. Like, Tondo was way too aggressive the first game, and we punished him for that. He uh, tried to hard engage when none of his team was there. Same with Ezreal, he split pushed a lot without any vision, and we could get good picks off him, so... I rotated them a lot. Second game, we struggled a little bit, but uh, I think we pulled through. Okay, so I guess a few questions. Um, you already mentioned their draft, but on the other yeah. side of it, how did you guys? How did you guys feel getting Zinzao, Camille, uh, two games? And you also had that Lissandra open for that uh, for that first pick rotation in game two. So you pretty much got whatever you like. I'm assuming you got whatever you wanted. In your drafting in games one and two, right? Uh, I guess they didn't. Um, I guess we were, we really did prioritize the Camille pick because uh, Cam Cam uh, it allowed me for uh, the camp top lane because we've been practicing a lot, so mm -hmm. we knew we could punish the top lane and focus around top and mid because bot lane was planning on playing safe. I don't know. I I never really saw their jungler gank punch besides the second game. But, uh, you know, we kind of out-rotated them, so they couldn't really do So, do the big follow-up question is, in regards to that bot lane, game two, picking a brand AP carry for bot, is that something you guys have been practicing, or was Opposin just saying, hey, I can do this? Like, what, what was the I'm, thought going into that pick? I never saw him play it. <laughs> he says he's been practicing it, but uh, to be fair, He's destroyed eighties, especially early on. Mm -hmm. That that just goes even if it was a regular eighty carry, Karma could poke down the gym very easily. So it was very smart to pick the brand. You could just poke him. It's just like double poke that you can't really out push him either. Yeah, I you know. I, I think it was really intelligent from you guys, especially since opposing to practicing it. T Crank and I were <laughs> we kinda went wild <laughs> here in the caster box. Yeah. Uh, I was hoping to see something cheeky. <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping to see something cheeky with the bot lane meta being so crazy the past couple of days. And we, uh, I, mean, we I, think, got I think the brand was a little more than cheeky. It was fiery. It was explosive. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah, with... Really all the great... Yeah. I think, really I think that was pretty good. Besides so, the Kai'Sa Illusion, too, so... So as I understand it... Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I guess, sorry. is that why uh, Ezreal was left open? Because you don't uh, think Ezreal's that great? In the first game? Uh, yeah, we just let it slide. We, we, we knew he wasn't going to be a threat, so... so. Um, oh. Yeah, I liked your comp a lot in the first game, especially the Lissandra pick. Uh, I was not, like, um, I was not impressed by it, like, the pick, but he played super well with it. Did you guys, like, like the Lissandra a lot? Just because of how much you can do with it? That, that's, that's, like, one of his pocket picks, so... We knew he would outperform. He usually performs very well in his lane, so we had no doubts. Okay. So, as I understand it, this is your guys' first series win for Prophecy Cup, right? Uh, I think so. I don't remember. <laughs> Shit. So, well, okay. I guess I guess now that you know that you have that first W under your belt, you gave uh, IRL the L. <laughs> Double L, IRL. Anyhow. Lol. Um, <laughs> How do you 
pro- the rest of the Prophecy Cup now that you're riding high on your pretty dominant match victory. Both of your games were under 30 minutes, so hats off to you guys. Yeah. Uh, we've been practicing a lot, so I feel really good about the Prophecy Cup. Uh, of course, we're not the perfect team. We do make a little mistake here and there that we do point out. Uh, I think we could uh, make it very far considering we've come a long way. We've been playing together for quite a while now, so we stand up really well. Yeah. On our type of uh, our macro play, because sometimes we don't call out, we don't do the right calls, obviously, so. So. I think we do we do well. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd actually agree. Watching you guys play together was really, really impressive, especially in game one, watching you guys channel TPs together with top and mid. Uh, seeing the level of coordination from multi-man shockwaves from the Oriana in game two. Mm-hmm. I think you guys really do practice well together. It's really exciting to watch you guys play. It's really exciting to watch most of the teams here in the Prosky Cup play. Uh, if not all. I haven't seen quite all the teams yet, but it's very fun casting them. We've got an invader. Um, in one, not even one game. Oh, hello? <laughs> Caught oh, in mid-sentence. We've got a poison. What's up, dude? Ooh. Well, you wanted to come in here for a quick uh, a quick shout out or whatever? Yeah, I was just thinking about like well I didn't personally watch the uh the that what's the thing called? The show, whatever. Yeah, the talk uh, show. Yeah. But my top was watching it and he was like they're like, We're bottom three team, uh <laughs> top and um, diamond frauds, uh <laughs> that team is fucking garbage. Diamond like, frauds. Huh? Wait a <laughs> okay, I'm okay, like... wait, wait, wait. I don't think T Crack and I here are on the talk show or we manage the, the power rankings. Um, no, that wasn't us. Yeah. Well, well I definitely was surprised not. by those comments. But yeah. I mean, we played with the sub last week, and I mean, I mean our support did... is usually our main shot caller, so. Oh, uh, Kathy yeah, won? taking a break. No, not Kathy. We... Yeah. Clear Image was our support. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. So... So, um, yeah, uh, your jungler here, Snuffin' Muffins, just mentioning that you guys have been practicing a lot together uh, as complimenting him and, I guess, your entire team on your level of focus and your level of coordination together. So, you know, with all of that in mind, knowing how hard you guys practice, knowing that eventually you'll have your full roster back together, you'll have your shot caller and support rolled right there, where do you guys see yourselves going forward from, you know, this second week? To the end of the Prophecy Cup? Do you guys think that you're going to be top dogs, or at least up there? Who's your biggest competition moving forward? All that kind of jazz. Uh, we're probably just going to take it, like, every game at a week. Like, we, I don't think we should get too ahead of ourselves or anything like that. Uh, I think, like, after the week's over, you'll definitely see, like, a big separation between, like, the top teams and then the bottom teams. So, I think... Um, when that happens, we'll probably I'll probably have a better definition of who is like our competition and what we should focus on. Okay. Well, absolutely humble in victory. I'm sure graceful in defeat. Opposing snuff and muffins, the rest of free take a showing us that they are not free at all. <laughs> Taking a really decisive match victory. It is IRL oh, that IRL. is free. <laughs> Hey, I mean, they're sluts. They're free. Okay, okay. That's, that's, I'm, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh, that Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's too easy. Hey, we're calling it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, stay tuned tomorrow. We've got two more matches coming up. Two more matches on Monday and Tuesday night. So stay tuned for those. Look at the schedule. Yep, we got an exciting next couple of days. Anyways, peace out, Prophecy Cup.